Welcome, everyone. It's the top of the hour. I'm Theo Agasback in Houston, and I'd like to welcome you to today's GlomCon seminar. Today, our talk is membranous nephropathy, novel treatment paradigm, paradigms. Dr. Jorge Rojas Rivera, is, we'd like to take some time to acknowledge the global effort that GlomCon has become. We thank all of our participants and those behind the scenes, and today we'd like to take a moment to thank one of our corporate sponsors. Can you hear me? Yes, excellent. And we can see your slides. They're perfect. Perfect. OK. Uh, well, uh, good morning or good afternoon to all, depending on where you are. First of all, I would like to thank the organization of Glowcon USA for inviting me uh, to this seminar. Um, I hope uh, that it will be of interest and useful uh, to all of you. In this talk, uh, we are going to give an overview of the current therapeutic um, approach to membranous nephropathy and how we are uh, witnessing a shift of several paradigms in this disease, mainly based on a better understanding of its pathogenesis and the developing of new drugs. Uh, I, I, I have no conflict of interest to this hall. Uh, this is uh, my roadmap that I will follow in the present talk. Uh, we are going to look at the pathogen and pathogenesis and some concepts of the new antigen in the current scenario. We will see the role of anti-TL to our antibodies as a marker of prognosis and as clinical tool to monitor the course of the disease during, during treatment. We will highlight the importance of establishing a baseline a risk profile and or give a nephroprotective treatment. We will make uh, some reference to the recommendation of the KDGO 2021 guidelines and the results of the four of the most re relevant and recent clinical trials. In the final part, uh, we will uh, mention two emerging therapies, uh, which mainly focus on refractory case of membranous nephropathy. And finally, we will give the conclusion and key message to consider the clinical in the clinical practice. Uh, respect to introduction. Membranous nephropathy is the main cause of nephrotic syndrome in no diabetes white uh, adults and the second cause in African American and Hispanic individuals. This is a kidney specific autoimmune glomerular disease caused by circulating podocyte targeted uh, and autoantibodies, mainly anti PLA 2 r about 70%, by novel autoantibodies and antigens have been described in the last years. The lesion, the injury, consists uh, of a diffuse uh, thickening of the glomerular capillary walls due to uh, immune complex formation and deposited on the outer aspect of the GPM. Uh, can you see in the, uh, on the right in this slide? The new deposit uh, are IgG or antigen and complement components uh, seen as electrodense deposit and subepithelial lesion on electronic microscope. What, is it, what are the consequences? Podocyte da damage, alteration of the GVM, developing on proteinuria, and kinetic disfunction. This is important to understand the key steps in the M M pathogenesis because each of them can be a, a, a potential therapeutic target. In this, in this slide, in this graphic, I want to show you an overview of the pathogenic mechanisms that are involved in the development of membrane nephropathy. It starts with a genetic predisposition and triggers that can be environmental factors such as viral infections, smoking, and pollution. For example, studies in China have found that pollution, according to the size and the weight of particles in the air, powers the development of membranous nephropathy. This event led to immune deregulation with activation and proliferation of autoreactive P and B cells, decrease of regulatory T lymphocytes and production of autoantibodies by B cell and plasma cells. This is very important. These autoantibodies bind to PLA2R or thrombospondin 7A in the podocyte. In any case, antigen antibody binding favors the development and the position of immune complex. The activation of the classical complement pathway. Also, there are also studies that say that the alternative pathway could be involved leading to podocyte and GPN damage, proteinuria, tubular damage, and finally, the clinical progression of nephropathy and kidney failure. This is the structure. 